Hey everybody, welcome to today's video. So since we have not been able to get these little babies to a rehabilitator or a rescue yet, I decided to take the opportunity to show you all another technique of how you can feed dove babies if you come across them until you can get them to a rescue. Now most rescues due to the season are full. They are at max capacity. Um, so that's delaying um, these little guys' uh, pick up or drop off a little bit. But in our case also it's not exactly an emergency situation since I have the supplies and the capability of feeding them. Therefore they're not you know, um, I guess a priority in that sense. So another technique is that you can use a syringe. Now, as you've seen with the cockatiel babies, um, you kind of slide the syringe down to their crop, which for these guys is going to be very different. I know, I know. Now this little one is actually very much focused on wanting me to feed him. Um, we've named this little one Beta. This is the little one that has a little bit of a crooked head. Um, the head always seems to pull to the left for some reason. So if you pay attention, hold on, let go, let go, you're all right. If you look at the head a little bit, you'll notice that it seems to always kind of end up sideways. He's straight ahead right now. So this is the front of his body, and you can see it's towards the left more. So anyways, another way you can feed these little guys if you have them temporarily while you wait for a rescue to take them on or um, wait for a rehabilitator is actually to trigger their beak to open, which you do this by placing your fingers around the beak as if it was inside of something. And then you want to, come on, squirt in a little bit of food at a time and let them swallow it. And then you do it again, trigger the opening again squirt in some food in the bottom and then they swallow it and you just keep doing that until their little crop you can feel the crop right now it's empty and they definitely need to eat no no yeah you guys are doing good they actually had a little bath the other day actually last night so they're a lot cleaner now is that good? You like your num nums? Num nums, yes. There you go. Come on, just come a little bit closer. Let's show everybody how you eat. There you go. And once they get it down, now the first one or two or three times will be a lot messier, but once they um, understand what's happening, they actually start cooperating really well. So we've actually named them Alpha and Beta. <laughs> the bigger one we named Alpha just because it's bigger and because it tends to fight a lot more. And the smaller, younger one, this one, we named Beta because it's a lot smaller and um, tends to get pushed back a lot. If I actually feed them at the same time, Alpha will literally shove its beak into Beta's um, throat trying to steal the food out of Beta's crop. So for that reason, I tend to feed them one at a time. Um, whoopsie, we missed! We missed! And this can get messy at times. We're going to go ahead and we're going to clean you up. Yeah, we're going to clean that up right away. You just had a bath. You were just nice and clean. Yes, you were. Yeah, you were. You were just nice and clean. What'd you do, Beta? What'd you do, Beta? See, Beta knows that I feed them. So Beta's looking for my hands to supply food. Yes, I know. And mouth's open. <laughs> okay, baby, come on. Yes, you can have more food. You can have more food. Come on. Come on, show everybody how you eat. There you go. Nom nom. And the funny thing is actually that Beta is a better, um, has a better response, beak response, than Alpha does. Beta is a lot easier to feed for me than 
alpha. And these guys don't bite, they're not aggressive in any way or form, which is actually really nice. And they do really well. And again, just for anybody who might be new um, or who might have overheard uh, or seen from another channel that I actually have a cockatiel baby, what are you looking at? Y'all see them fl flutter the wings? That wing fluttering is kind of like with other birds, they open their beak for mama. And these guys, they flutter their wings. Yes. <laughs> Y'all see that? That's cute, huh? Anyways. So, come on, let's keep eating. Want some more? Nom nom. Now in theory you could leave the syringe in and let him kind of chew it and like keep squeezing it a little bit. I don't really like that because I feel like there's a lot less control over what goes in. You don't know if they're ready. Um, or if it, 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 in my opinion, it's a lot easier for them to aspirate that way. And aspiration is basically when, for anybody who might not know, aspiration is when the food goes down into the wrong tunnel, ending up in the lungs, and you're breathing rather than in your stomach. And for baby birds or birds in general, that is extremely dangerous and almost always deadly. Um, so you don't want to do that. They don't have like a cough like we do, like the same bodily functions to fight a moment like that. Right, Bye Yeah. Yeah, I know. You guys see this? He's trying to get me to feed him some more. Yeah. I make little noises for them to, to know I'm about to feed him. And they actually recognize it now. So if I make the noise from further away, they start fluttering their wings and they start looking for me. You ready? There you go. Yeah, yum nums. You guys see how his head is always kind of tilted like that? Hold on. Screen's not focusing. There we go. You guys see how the head keeps like tilting? Like he's always pulling the head this way and always kind of angling it. It's not by choice. He's actually got like a crooked head. And I don't know if this is like a neck injury from maybe when they were attacked or when they fell out of their nest. Um, since there was no nest anywhere above them, unless it was carried away for some reason or blown away by a storm or something. Which doesn't seem likely because we didn't have any storm anytime recently. Not a big one anyway. Come on. Alright, come on. And it can take a minute to find the right area to trigger the beak to open. Yeah, I know. Go on, close it. There you go. Almost lost it there, huh? You almost lost it there. Yeah. I know, Alpha, you're going to get food too. Don't worry. Anyways, you're doing a good job. And then while you feed them, you just randomly kind of feel the crop and see how much food you've got in there. And right now, Beta needs much more food in that crop. That crop is still not anywhere near being full. So we're going to keep going. And this takes a while. As you guys can see, these feedings take a lot longer than... Um, than the cockatiel feedings. With the cockatiels, you, if you're doing the uh, syringe feeding into the crop, they're a lot faster. Come 
one. Yeah. I know, you gotta stay in the video, honey. In the video, everybody wants to see you. Yeah, everybody wants to see you. With this little guy, I'm just not so sure how well he would do in the wild. Considering he's got that crooked head, it makes me worried a little bit for him. But I'm sure that whoever's got the experience and is more of an expert on these issues will be able to make the proper decision and ensure that you have the best possible chances regardless of what happens. Right, Bubba's? Yeah, we gotta find somebody who's able to do exactly what you need. If we are, and somebody who's got space, because there's lots of babies that are being picked up right now. And um, I'm going to mention this again, because I have mentioned this in a previous video, but I do want to mention this again. It is absolutely important that if you, um, if you find a nestling on the ground, okay, it is a myth that the mother, in average, it is a myth I don't know if any birds where this applies, but it is a myth that a baby bird will be rejected by its mother after a human has touched it. That is not true. A lot of people believe that to be a fact because it's a very common issue in mammals, um, that once the human smell is on them that they no longer, that they will no longer accept them. But this is a myth for birds. So. And it is also um, a myth for birds that if you can't reach their nest, and this applies to most um, species, I don't know if this applies to all of them, but it can often help to just make a phone call to uh, fishing games or to a rehabilitator and find out the details, give them a description of the bird, and um, find out what the rules are for placing these babies back. But generally, um, the parents will continue feeding the baby even if it's not in the nest. Um, because uh, fledglings will, for an example, leave the nest, be on a branch somewhere further from the nest, or like even underneath the tree or in a bush, and the parents will actually look for them, call them, and hear their babies call, and then fly to them to feed them. And this applies usually to nestlings too. So even if you can't reach a nest to place the baby back, um, I have been told by rehabilitators and by fishing games um, that if you have, say, like a basket or something, um, to try to attach it as high as you can reach, preferably with a ladder, into the same tree as close to the nest as you can, with the baby in it, and the parents will continue caring for that baby and continue protecting that baby. Um, and then you just want to make sure that you check back to make sure the baby's okay, you want to make sure that the baby has not been uh, rejected or attacked um, because it is possible for a baby to be thrown out of the nest um, due to health issues. Um, and in those cases, you know, the parents may not take it back because it might just reject it all over again. And then that baby will need help. But in average, most of the time, the babies just fall out because maybe there was... Um, another bird that attacked, or maybe there was a windstorm, or maybe simply a sibling just pushed them out because they were bigger and stronger, or they fell out on accident. And um, in those cases, uh, placing the baby back is really the best thing you can do for them. So, just so you guys all know, you should always try to look for the nest and try to place them back where they came from. If you if you can't find a nest, obviously, you know, then, you know, you, you, you're going to want to try and find a professional to care for them. It is very much recommended against raising these guys on your own, even if you intend to release them, because you don't know, you know, um, what, how to handle them specifically, unless you have the knowledge and the training, how to handle them specifically to ensure that they will be successful in the wild once they're released. You know, there are certain things that they may need to be that may need to be taught by them that they would normally learn from their mother or father or both that we as humans are unaware of, either can't teach them or need to teach them in a certain way. And 
So a professional rehabilitator, which is somebody who raises them specifically to release them in the wild, um, to put them back, um, will be able to do these things properly and make sure that they have the best chance out there. Because you don't want to raise a baby and then care about them, set them out there, and then not succeed and possibly, you know, um, die because they didn't have the skills to survive out there. And, you know, you, you thought you did everything right, but, you know, there's just some things missing that you didn't know about. So it's always best for them to either be raised by their parents or to be raised by a professional. Right, Bubba's? And we'll find you somebody. Yes, we will. We will find you somebody. Everything going on with uh, Pikachu the other day. If you guys haven't seen the video yet, Pikachu did get away and um, and flew away. And uh, I've got that in a story time here on a previous video. Um, you guys are welcome to watch it to uh, learn from our adventure, from the accident that happened where Pikachu got out. But, um, hold on. I forgot what I was saying. Come on. See? Oh, yeah. I did get sidetracked for a couple of days there, and I wasn't calling around as much to find them somebody um, due to the whole... Pikachu fiasco. Yeah, Pikachu sidetracked Mama. Yes, he did. Yeah, you did. Uh-huh. Spoiled little booger. Mischief. Come on. You want some more? Are you done? Are you full? Are you full? There you go. You know what, I think you're, yep, you're about done, alrighty. Well, that was Beta's feel, feeding. Hope you guys enjoyed seeing Beta again. He's definitely grown a lot. He looks a lot better now. I know he doesn't, still doesn't look perfect, but keep in mind, the feathers are still growing. But he looks a lot better now that I've uh, cleaned him up. The feathers are coming in nicely. He's looking a little healthier now. You guys can see how the head's tilted like that? It's always tilted. Always tilted to the side like this. Like that. See that? So, I don't know if that's based on an injury or maybe just, um, you know, like a birth defect. But other than that tilt, Beta appears to be completely healthy and, uh, and in good condition. So, you want to tell everybody bye bye? Yeah. They let out the cutest little noises, don't they? They say bye bye, everybody. Say thank you for watching my video. Say thank you for watching my video. Alrighty, y'all. I'm going to go ahead and feed Alpha now. Thank you so much for stopping in and uh, being here while I fed Beta. And we will see you again soon. Right, Beta? Yeah. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to hit that like button. It helps us a lot. And if you'd be so kind to share the video, we would really appreciate it. Leave a comment because we love to read them. And we'd love to hear your input. And uh, if you're new to the channel, or if you haven't yet, please do subscribe to the channel. Because we will be continuously posting videos of our little adventures of animals that we save. And of the animals that are part of our family already. Our pet goose and our four cockatiels, including our little babies. Alrighty. Thank you so much. We'll see you all soon. Bye. Okay, bye-bye.